haunting of Blackwood Forest. Blackwood Forest was celebrated for its stunning beauty. Tucked away in the rugged Appalachian Mountains, it featured miles of peaceful hiking trails, thick woods, and breathtaking waterfalls. For those who loved nature and outdoor activities, it was a hidden treasure, far from the chaos of urban life. However, for the locals, Blackwood Forest had a more sinister reputation. Tales of disappearances, strange sightings, and unsettling events circulated, making many wary of venturing into its deeper, more isolated areas. Ben, Sarah, and Jake were passionate hikers. They had conquered some of the toughest trails across the nation and were always on the lookout for new adventures. Blackwood Forest, with its vast wilderness and legendary allure, seemed like the ideal spot for their next excursion. They brushed off the local legends. After all, they had heard countless spooky stories during their travels and had never encountered anything truly bizarre. In early September, the trio packed their gear and headed out for a weekend in Blackwood. Their plan was straightforward. Hike to a secluded peak deep within the forest, camp overnight, and return the following day. It was a trek they felt well prepared for. Little did they know, their trip would transform into a chilling experience that none of them would ever forget. Into the woods, the hike began like any other. The morning air was crisp, sunlight filtered through the trees, and the only sounds were the crunch of leaves beneath their feet and the occasional chirp of birds. The trio followed the main trail for several hours before veering off onto a less traveled path. This route was narrower, winding deeper into the forest where the trees grew denser, their branches intertwining to block out much of the sunlight. After about five hours of hiking, they reached a clearing and decided to take a break. As they sat on a fallen log, enjoying their lunch, Jake noticed something unusual. A small wooden structure, partially hidden among the trees just beyond the clearing. It resembled an old hunting blind, weathered and worn by time. Hey, check this out, Jake said, standing up and pointing toward the structure. The others followed him. Their curiosity peaked. The wooden frame was barely standing, looking as if it hadn't been used in years. Still, there was something unsettling about it, tucked away as if someone had tried to conceal it from view. Who would build this all the way out here? Sarah asked, her voice low, as if she didn't want to disturb the forest's tranquility. Ben shrugged. Hunters, maybe? Or someone looking for a private spot? Jake, always the adventurous one, suggested they explore the area a bit more. It wasn't on the trail, but it was close to their planned route, and they had plenty of time before needing to set up camp. Reluctantly, Sarah and Ben agreed, and they ventured deeper into the woods. As they walked further, the forest grew quieter. The usual sounds, birds, rustling leaves, distant water, faded away, replaced by an oppressive stillness. It felt as if the forest itself was holding its breath, watching them. The abandoned cabin, after nearly an hour of hiking through the thick woods, they came across something unexpected. A small cabin, worn and decaying, nestled in a shallow dip in the ground. It appeared to have been deserted for decades, with its windows boarded up and the door hanging loosely from its hinges. How did we miss this on the map? Ben grumbled, spreading out the map they had brought along, but there was no sign of any buildings in this part of the forest. Jake, undeterred by the unsettling atmosphere, stepped closer to the cabin. Let's check it out. Sarah hesitated. I don't know, guys. This place gives me the creeps. We should head back to the trail before it gets dark. Jake dismissed her worries. We'll be quick. Just a quick look. Despite her instincts, Sarah followed the two men toward the cabin. The air felt heavy around them, and the forest seemed to grow darker than it had just moments before. There was something off about this place, though none of them could quite identify what it was. 
Jake pushed the door open, which creaked on its rusty hinges. Inside, the cabin was empty, except for a few pieces of broken furniture and a thick layer of dust that seemed to invite writing. The walls were adorned with old, faded photographs, black and white images of a family, a man, a woman, and two children. But something was unsettling about the pictures. The faces were blurred, as if they had been intentionally smudged or erased. Okay, I've seen enough, Sarah said, stepping back from the doorway. Let's go. Jake lingered a moment longer, gazing at the photographs. Weird, he muttered, before joining the others outside. As they walked away from the cabin, Sarah noticed something else. The trees surrounding them looked different. Their bark was charred, and their branches twisted into unnatural shapes, resembling hands reaching out to grab them. An oppressive silence followed them, and Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The first night, by the time they found a suitable spot to set up camp, the sun was setting, casting long shadows across the forest floor. A sense of unease lingered, but they tried to shake it off. They had camped in isolated areas before. This was no different, they reassured themselves. They built a fire and ate in relative silence, each lost in their own thoughts. As the night deepened, the wind picked up, whispering through the trees with a strange, almost mournful sound. It was around midnight when the first strange noise broke the stillness. A distant, low humming sound, like the vibration of a massive engine or the hum of power lines. But there were no power lines or roads for miles. The sound seemed to come from deep within the forest, growing louder and then fading, only to start again minutes later. Do you guys hear that? Sarah asked, sitting up in her sleeping bag. Yeah, Jake replied, frowning. Maybe it's the wind, or some kind of natural sound. But it didn't sound natural. It was too rhythmic, too mechanical. The three of them stayed awake, listening to the strange sound for hours. Eventually, exhaustion overtook them, and one by one, they fell asleep. Day two, the discovery. The next morning, they awoke to find the forest shrouded in fog. The air was cold and damp, and the fire had long since died out. As they packed up their camp, Ben noticed something odd. Guys, look at this. He pointed to the ground around their campsite. There, in the soft earth, were footprints, bare human footprints leading from the edge of the clearing to the spot where they had been sleeping. The prints were large, much larger than any of their own, and they circled around the campsite before disappearing back into the woods. Who the hell would be out here barefoot in the middle of the night? Jake asked, his voice tinged with fear. No one had an answer. The uneasy feeling that had settled over them the day before came rushing back. They quickly decided to cut their trip short and head back to the main trail. But as they packed up their gear, Sarah suddenly froze, her eyes fixed on the trees. Do you see that? She whispered. The others turned to follow her gaze. At first, all they could see was the thick fog and the dark silhouettes of the trees. But then, slowly, a figure began to materialize from the mist. It was tall, unbelievably tall and its movements were jerky and unnatural, as if it were being manipulated by unseen strings. Run, Ben urged, and they took off. They grabbed whatever they could and sprinted back toward the trail, the figure fading into the fog behind them. Their hearts raced in their chests, and the eerie humming sound returned, louder than before, echoing through the trees. The Escape for hours they ran, weaving through the dense fog and gnarled trees, retracing their steps back to where it all began. The sensation of being watched lingered, and occasionally they would catch a fleeting glimpse of a tall figure lurking in the distance, always just beyond their reach. By the time they arrived at the trailhead, the sun was dipping below the horizon, casting an unsettling golden glow over the forest. They were drained their muscles sore from the frantic escape. But they pressed on until they finally reached their car. 
as they drove away from Blackwood Forest. Silence enveloped them. The weight of their experience loomed large, unspoken and chilling. They couldn't comprehend what they had witnessed or why the forest had felt so wrong. But one thing was certain, they would never set foot there again. The Aftermath. Weeks later, Sarah scoured the internet for information about Blackwood Forest, desperate for answers to the mystery they had faced. However, all she uncovered were vague tales, old legends of a family that vanished in the woods during the 1930s, eerie sightings of tall, shadowy figures, and accounts of hikers who disappeared without a trace. The locals referred to it as cursed, a place where the past intertwined with the present, where the forest itself seemed to pulse with something dark and sinister. And while Ben, Sarah, and Jake had managed to escape with their lives, they were acutely aware that something had followed them out of those woods, something that would haunt their dreams and memories for years to come. If you enjoyed this story, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We'll be back with more fascinating stories from the world of crime. Until then, stay curious and stay safe.